Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Galileo Conquest Part 11 and the Cheap Sheep Mark II is taking to flight under the control of Jebediah Kerman. Now, the Cheap Sheep Mark II is, well, it's actually paradoxically more expensive than the Mark I, which means that calling it cheap isn't really good because it doesn't do very good at the whole being cheap thing. What it does do very well is actually fly. We've moved the control surfaces around, we've adjusted fuel loads, we've added some uh, better position brakes and things like that. This device truly is going to be able to hit those high altitudes and stay there once and for all. At least, that's Jebediah's plan. He's made a lot of special modifications himself, because Jebediah Kerman is, of course, the Thrill Master extraordinaire. A Kerbal of many talents, many understandings. A Kerbal who can grab the bull by the horns and fly it into space, because he's Jebediah Kerman. So yeah, the good news is that after a bit of iteration on the design, I mean, second try, we reduced the amount of oxidizer, therefore left more fuel early on to use the uh, Panther afterburners to give us more, ex uh, more thrust, more acceleration inside the atmosphere. And that brought this creation up to uh, 13,000 meters and set Mach 2 before, the, uh, before we had to start activating the rocket engine. That boosts us up into a suborbital trajectory and from here it's only about 200 meter per second delta V to get into orbit. 97 kilometers up, throttling up the engine, only using one third thrust here because we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to strand Jebediah Kerman in space because he's the only one that can fly these spacecraft. You know, we'd have to actually send a, one of those non-reusable spacecraft. Look at it! Beautiful! This is truly a great step forward for Kerbal Kind if only we could actually launch it into an, al uh, an orbit which matched the space station. I think uh, we are going to need a bit more refinement to the design. But at least we can get into orbit. That is that is a good thing to see. I mean, it's a nice first step, but really this is just a, a technology demonstrator as we're exploring the limits. We're probably going to move to better engines at some point. Oh, I guess we can actually get some science while we're here. If we wait for the right moment, we should be able to get Jebediah outside over a, a biome which has so far been untouched by orbital check. Quick, quick, quick! Over here, and we got it. We now know what it's like to fly effortlessly across the lowlands of Gale. Jebediah Kerman, of course, writes the best reports. They usually have lots of pictures of explosions and things like that, because that's really all that Jebediah thinks about. So, for returning, we kind of would like to get it as close to the landing site as possible. So, using trajectories mod, we try to... I try to come up with a, a descent trajectory that will put that X in roughly the right place. We do have a little bit of liquid fuel, but we don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to have to rely on that. Ideally, if we can get that thing on target without having to mess around with liquid fuel, without having to burn the engines, that'll feel pretty good because a whole gliding descent trajectory right to the runway is no mean feat to pull off when you don't have a... If you don't have a whole bunch of PhDs that have already figured out the aerodynamics of these things. I mean, that was actually one of the nice things about the space shuttle compared to other spacecraft. If it messed up its re-entry by uh, a few seconds, it had more than enough cross-range capability to hit the target. Certainly, capsule designs also have a bit of capability to adjust their landing spot. Anyway, we have... We have set our descent trajectory. It's going to be a 31.9 meters per second burn. Estimated burn duration, one second. But of course, we're not going to do anything like that. We're going to burn at a very low rate to make sure that we hit our window correctly. A little rotation over like that. Look at all the air intakes on the underside. I mean, I think spacecraft that go from a jet-powered regime to a rocket-powered regime to orbit 
are probably only ever going to exist in Kerbal Space Program because the main reason, well, the main reason for this is that even the fastest jet engines like those on the Blackbird, those limit, those, you know, top out at about Mach 3, maybe Mach 4. I don't know. I'm sure you can push them quite a bit. But that is a long way from being orbital velocity, whereas in Kerbal Space Program, Mach 3 is halfway to orbital velocity. So anyway, we've made our descent burn. Now we're going to run around the planet, run that time forward. Perhaps we'll get a nice sunset before we begin our fiery plunge back towards the back towards the terra firma. Terra firma? Gala firma? Gala firma, that's what we'll call it. I have to keep rewriting all these common terms because the planet is a completely different one. Sunset or Syroset? Yes, it's Syroset. Now, just before we prepare for descent, there is one more very important thing that Jeb needs to do. He needs to get out and take a look around and write down all his important information right now. Are you mad, bro? No, he's Jeb, bro. You know, now I think about it, there's a lot of bros in bro force. Jeb should be in bro force. He would be like this rocket-powered green thing that was just broing it up enforcing things in a Broforce type way. Broforce is a really silly, you know, pixel shooter game with, um, yeah, Bro Dread and Brobocop and Ram Bro. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really silly. And if you see it on in sale, it's definitely worth buying for just giggles. Okay, so we're descending. I'm trying to keep the altitude as high as possible while we bleed off speed here. Pumping some fuel around, you see, to try and keep the whole thing stable. But unfortunately, my descent trajectory seems to be going in the wrong direction. Obviously, I need to keep the nose up, because if we let the nose drop down, then I'll plunge through the atmosphere without having bled off enough speed, and I will burn up. Jebediah Kerman is a good pilot, but he still doesn't want to burn up. But if I just keep the nose high until we bleed off the speed, we should be fine. Current altitude is about 47 kilometers, and you'll notice that we're more or less keeping this altitude. We have enough aerodynamic lift at this speed to keep the aircraft up, which is good because the cockpit is getting very, very hot. But why are we not bleeding off speed particularly well? I do not like... I'm kind of getting a little concerned here. Okay, let's just keep this nose as high as possible. That will also help us bleed that speed. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're dipping down. No, we want to go up. I mean, actually, it doesn't matter. We just want to maintain high angle of attack so that we can keep the cockpit from overheating. I don't know. Maybe he should, like, jump into the rest of the plane or something. <laughs> no. Oh! Whoa! No! No! Jeb! Come in, Jeb! Come in! No! No! Tell me it's not true! No! Oh man, we're picking up uncontrolled oscillations on this thing. This is, this is bad. This is bad. This makes no sense. He previous, oh wow, look at the oscillations. Oh dear, this is really crazy. Not that it's going to matter because he's dead uh, one way or another. Maybe it'll land safely. Maybe the whole thing will just jet, gently glide to the surface. I do think it's interesting that despite losing the nose of the spacecraft, the rest of it is just fine? What the heck? Who sold me that Mark I cockpit? They told me it was okay for orbital re-entry. It, it, it was previously fine. What is it? What gives? I mean, the supplier of that is going to have to pay a huge penalty for supplying substandard components. But that wouldn't bring Jebediah back. Jebediah! He's, he's the heart and core of our space program. Whoa, whoa, we're losing bits, losing more bits. But the rest of the spacecraft is still holding together. Oh, there we go. Wow, that was, that was a breakneck oscillation there. Not sure how that, how that happened. Like, was it, did we lose brakes? I'm wondering, like, what actually happened there was, oh, the landing gear, maybe. Perhaps the landing gear was what was allowing us to maintain our uh, our attitude. No, no, no. Now we are just going steep, steep down towards the surface. Yep. This isn't going to land safely. No, oh, something did survive after all. What is that? The crew cabin. 
Yeah, the crew cabin. Well, it would have got the crew back safely if they hadn't been sitting in the cockpit. We'll send out a recovery team to check the black box and see what can be learned from this. Oh yeah, we get... Yeah, no, we didn't lose the landing gear. We have landing gear survived and the crew cabin. But for some reason, the the cockpit was unable to take the heat. This is truly a sad day for this space program. Jebediah will be missed. We didn't get any science either. Uh, we recovered some crew cabins and we got took a reputation hit. <sighs> and the contract, well, we still have a contract to fulfill. But we will fulfill it with a heavy heart. Well, after the loss of such an important figure, we really need a new focus, something that will... Get everyone excited about space once again, and... Mm -hmm. hmm, investor tour. We've got a big opportunity to increase our cash flow. Oh, money! That always motivates people. Some investors are looking to build a facility in space and would like a tour of the KSC. Unfortunately, due to a clerical error, we have two competing investors wait wanting a tour right now. We can't let the investors see each other, and there's only time to give one investor a tour. We'll have to pick which facility to we build. Grab a spare rover out of the space plane hangar and give the chosen investor a tour. We do have a spare rover, right? You know what? I have not built a rover yet. But uh, I can if needs be. This sounds fun. We can either build a casino or a hotel. I actually like the idea of a hotel better given that uh, Jebediah's gamble is what killed him. Rover 213, think fast, Jilfia Kerman. Yeah, this is just something I knocked together. We're going to do some experimental surveys as well. Wow, I like the way those lights actually look like speakers that are playing, like, fat tunes. She's just, like, dropping the dubstep as she rolls down the runway here. I mean, no, they're, they're lights. So those are the two tourists there, and they're sitting over, like, I guess they're standing on the ground over there, so we'll go and visit them. And the one that we want to pick is the one that will give... Oh, wow, wait, why is it pausing? It paused for a second there. The one we want to pick is the one that gives the, us the hotel. I mean, we're not that picky, but I don't know what a casino does where I could imagine how a space hotel works. How does roulette work in Zero-G? Has anybody ever given a thought to how Las Vegas games would work in Zero-G? Because you know that, like... Bigelow, doesn't he make his money in building Las Vegas hotels? So surely he's interested in how... Whoa, what the heck? What the heck happened? Whoa! Wait, 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 wait. Where did they go? Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. What the heck? Oh, wait. Where'd they go? Wait, 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 wait. They just, like... I think what must have happened was that they loaded in and they were standing on the surface and then when the model loaded when we got close it realized that they were way below ground and so it bounced them into the air but where where is he gone like they oh there he is no way it says target is right in front of us okay that's them they've gone like 400 meters away from their original position that seems it doesn't seem to be particularly good. Oh, there's that other guy. Let's just sneak around behind them. Let's hope they don't notice this rover driving by. Nothing to see here. We're just uh, we're just regular rover driving thing. Uh, your tour bus will be along sometime. Sometime. Let's get this one. I mean, you know, we could take the other one if we wanted to build the casino, but, you know, gambling and all that. Okay. Now we can... Oh, why is it pausing? There is some weird... Po There's another one. We're getting weird loading glitches. This is this is the glitchiest mission so far. Oh, 90. Okay. This is not good. I'm hoping it doesn't crash because that would be... You know, like the game would... Wait a... What? 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 Huh? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm wondering if this... Uh, this uh, individual has played, paid a visit to the Arctic and found some sort of frozen spacecraft buried in the ice because that looks pretty... <laughs> what? 
Wow, I have no idea what is going on here. Like, the physics... The physics for the ragdoll has just frozen. It's stopped updating because of just... We... Oh my god. <laughs> no, it's just like the ragdoll is not responding. Eld... Eld... Eldling? Eldling? Eld... You're ailing, whatever. You're an ailing alien. What the... Deuce. <laughs> uh, yeah, so are you ready for your tour yet? Because we, I've heard that we want to work together. <laughs> yeah. The material here is curious. Unfortunately, composition, yeah, okay, this is very, maybe it's the curious material here which has affected his physiology. Oh my god. Yeah, she's a scientist, so she can do all that. Yeah, I'm just wondering. Yeah, she can get in. She can store that. But I've just realized, actually, to get... I to, can this guy actually get in there? Uh, <laughs> let's just try this. Oh. Can the... Oh, wait! <laughs> it walks! It. <laughs> you know what it is? It's like the T-1000 at the end of Terminator 2 when it gets blown up by the grenade launcher. <laughs> So I wonder if the ladder will work on the front of this. If the ladder on this works, then what? It'll probably just reset the tourist to like north. <laughs> just climb that ladder. Oh, that'll fix you right up. There we go. And now I realized that was that was the only way into this thing. So I have to do like a crew transfer. Uh, where is it? Transfer into that area, and you will be nice and safe. Nobody in the world needs to see your deformity now. We will take care of you. We will show you the world and we will show you the space center. Okay, so jump in. Get in and start driving around. Lots of science to do. All this science. So we have actually science report. Or not science, here and now. This is the wrong one. Science, here and now. Ah, it's telling me to do a temperature scan. Today is warm, but a good day for science. Yes, it is, especially if you're into physiology. Mystery goo, and uh, yeah, we're transmitting those back. We don't really need to do that. I record the crew's assessment, which is probably very elastic at this time. The results are nothing special. Except... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edling looks fine now. You can see him waving there. Clearly, uh, the onboard facilities have managed to coerce him back to his normal shape. Okay, so I guess we've got to hit all these other locations. We've already got the... Cr oh, that's interesting. The investor tour has completed now that I've visited my second biome. Apparently, mission control was the key. They, would, they told me they want to see all those other places, but they really just cared about mission control. That seems highly suspicious. This thing is distorted like the alien in the thing, and now it doesn't care about anything else. It just wants to see mission control. I don't know about that. That seems uh, highly suspicious. Is it acceptable to tie investors up and then take blood and test that with a hot wire? No. No, okay. They do have lots of money, though, so if they are an alien that's trying to take over the world, at least they've given us lots of money. Although they are they are asking to build a space hotel. What's the bet that people that go to this hotel, Kerbals that go to this hotel, must come back mysteriously changed? That's what it is. They're going to basically take all the billionaires that want to go to the space hotel and then change them. And that's how they're going to take control of our economy from the top down. It's just like Stellaris where we're like, you know, doing the whole cultural takeover thing. I've got it figured out, but I have a crazy scary alien in the back. How do I, how do I figure, oh wait, actually he's gone now. That is very scary. That is really scary. We are going to have to follow up in the mystery of Alden Kerman for sure. Well, that'll be something to make up for future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.